Inflation in the United States is now officially at 8.5%. It's likely even in the teens if you account for the unofficial inflation rate. But most people don't understand what the hell inflation is. How does it work? Sam Bankman Fried, the founder of FTX and a multi billionaire before the age of 30, he had a great thread on Twitter explaining exactly what inflation is and how it works. Here are some of those exact tweets. First, he started out by saying inflation is in the eye of the beholder. This isn't exactly what the mainstream narrative includes. Then he goes on to explain that yes, inflation is bad. And as long as money goes up, the cost of goods goes up as well. But if we then look at his third tweet here, what we can see is that he describes that ultimately inflation is getting at what is the denominator? How are you actually going to hold the dollars constant? He says, if you rename cents to dollars and dollars to 100x dollars, then of course you've increased the money supply by 100x. Things inflated 100x, but everyone has just as much bread or whatever consumer good as before. And so a lot of inflation is merely the manipulation of numbers without actually changing the value or the quantity of the physical things in our lives. But if we then go ahead and we take a look at his next tweet, what we can see is that he says, over the past few years, money is up about 40% and the actual goods are up about 15%. But does that actually mean that there's a 25% increase in the physical goods? No, not at all. Actually, it may be the exact opposite. If we take a look, he says that let's use bread as the example. There's probably about 5% less bread in the world today. COVID created supply chain issues and that made it harder to ship bread around the world. And then the violent conflict in Ukraine literally led to lighting bread on fire and lots and lots less production of wheat. And so if the world has 40% more dollars, and 5% less bread, why is the price of bread only increased 15%? Sam then goes on to explain that that 15% increase directly comes from the idea that money is up 40%, the price of bread is up 15 and the amount of bread is down 5%. That means the median dollars are only up about 5%. And so if we take a look, much of the money increase went to the rich who can only consume so much bread. So much of that increase in money didn't lead to an increase in the actual price of goods. But even money to the rich leads to higher demand for things like energy, which in turn leads to more expensive bread. And so regardless of where the money goes, whether it's to the rich or the poor, demand increases. And if demand increases for a finite amount of goods, the price has to go up in order for everyone to be able to get it. If we then take a look Sam explains, we really have a few effects superimposed on each other. If you burn 5% of bread due to war and COVID, it's about 5% inflation. That's bad. But if you print 5% of money for everyone, it's 5% inflation as well. He claims that that's fine. Inflation is just the flip side of having more money. Now, of course, that is based on the fact that everyone would have to get 5% more money. But what we've seen in inflation is that the money goes to the rich people, not to the people who have no investable assets. And therefore, different people in the economy are actually affected differently. Then if we continue with Sam, he says that if you print 17.5% money, which goes to the rich, they spend it on investments. There's no inflation from that in terms of the price of consumer goods. But if you then print another 17.5% of money, and that goes to the rich, but they spent it on energy and other physical goods, which makes bread more expensive. That's the bad type of inflation that everyone's complaining about. And so if you simply give people money, and they invest it, it's not an issue. But if you give people money, and then they turn around and they spend it on actual consumable goods, it increases the price, and that is not evenly distributed in a society. Then if we continue, we can see here that Sam concludes, you can't increase the monetary supply and expect that to be free. But by the same token, when inflation follows, don't forget that some people still have more money. Stock splits aren't free money, and they also aren't pure dilution. They're two of the same side of the coin. And they're perfectly balanced. There's a really interesting way to look at this because Sam then goes ahead and points out that sometimes they're not perfectly balanced. In the end, you want to know how good things are? Look at the actual goods we get in the end. Do we have more or less of them? And how are they distributed? COVID sucked. War in Ukraine sucks. So we have much less stuff. And then lastly, and probably most importantly, Sam states... Piled on top are a combination of inflation and monetary supply increases and a change in monetary distribution just to confuse things. And so that's a great summary of exactly what's happening in our world right now. 
is we have the debasement of currency. We have the disruptions in supply chain. And instead of thinking about inflation is good or inflation is bad, what you have to understand is that the people who are most vulnerable in our societies, they're the ones who get hurt the most by this. Because any level of inflation, any increase in the monetary supply doesn't go to them. Those are the rich people. And those rich people, they're not very good at sharing. And so ultimately, the bottom 45% of Americans with no investable assets, they're struggling right now. They're getting paid less at work than they used to. And also, the cost of the goods they buy on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis are much, much higher than just 8.5% a year ago. And so ultimately, inflation is ravaging many, many Americans and even more people globally. We have to start to wrap our heads around this. We have to invest in personal finance, education, and we have to make sure that people have the information they need in order to preserve the financial security of themselves and their families moving forward. Hey you, did you like this video? Great, we make five of them a day and post them here on this channel. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, and see you next time.